classification of the waves, guys, we will classify the waves in different ways. First of all, um, these are from all level also, uh, mechanical and electromagnetic radiation. In mechanical, they need a medium to travel through it, right? They, they, there is a medium. In electromagnetic waves, they don't require any material or medium for its propagation, okay? All the EM waves or electromagnetic waves, uh, they don't need a medium to travel through. Water, sound, earthquake, etc. I think you know the difference between transverse and longitudinal. Uh, this classification of the waves, guys, depends on the shape of the wave fronts, right? Regularly, we may have circular and plane ish waves. It depends on the shape of the wave front. This one, it's the difference between progressive and stationary waves. Uh, I will explain that later on when we talk about standing waves or stationary waves. It would be better than explaining here. Uh, now here, guys, we have uh, to talk about electromagnetic waves. Like you know, electromagnetic waves, uh, or oh, there is a spectrum or electromagnetic radiation spectrum like this. You know that this spectrum starts from uh, or the one that has highest frequency, it's the radio waves. The one that has, uh, sorry, highest frequency, sorry, I meant longest wavelength is the radio waves. Well, the shortest wavelengths is R ish, the gamma rays are what? The gamma rays. Okay. This is what you have to memorize. The radio wave. You have to memorize, you know, from 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power minus 1. Microwave, 10 to the power minus 1 to 2 power minus 3. Infrared. Invisible, guys, you have to memorize this. It's a must. Invisible, it's a must. You, know, you will be asked several questions about invisible light. Uh, will, wavelength will not be given for you. Especially red will violet. Especially what? Red will violet. The ultraviolet is given the X-ray, the gamma ray. You know that. You know, in this way, the frequency uh, increases, the wavelength what decreases. Okay. Uh, here also you have to know the definition. Without further details, guys. Any horn? I'm going to go into further details about electromagnetic waves. Because the topic is too advanced, even even يعني beyond the. A level hatta. For all of the waves in electromagnetic spectrum are oscillating. And I'm giving you basic definition. I will not explain any other thing. Uh, as a definition, the uh, EM waves are waves that they have oscillating electric and what magnetic fields. These magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. As a definition. Let go from here, yalla. The main, pro the main thing that we have to know about magnetic waves, the, the properties of these EM waves. You know, all of them travel at the same speed in vacuum. They can be reflected, refracted, diffracted, and polarized. Well, this, the most important one that all these waves are transverse. And all these waves have the same speed in air, which is, I think you know this, which is given even in the uh, formula sheet at the beginning of the question. Uh, I think you know that the difference between uh, what is meant of pitch, what is meant of loudness, right? The pitch of sound depends on the frequency, right? Well, loudness depends on what? The amplitude of the sound. Let me consider this question, guys. The previous questions are easy. This question. In this question, guys, we are talking about what uh, the concept or of coherence. Here, guys, uh, here there's a phase difference between these two waves. It's very clear. If I want to check that if they are coherent or not, I have to find the shift between two equivalent points. Okay, shift between two equivalent points like this. Hmm. Okay. I took ash peak, this peak. 
with this peak. Equivalent points. This is the shift between these two peaks. I may take take also these this peak. With this peak. This is approximately the shift. Okay. This is the phase difference, guys. This is the phase difference. If the first difference is the same in all positions of the wave, so the waves are coherent. The waves are coherent. So here the answer is uh, the waves are coherent and in phase, they are not in phase actually. This is the main problem. In phase, they are not in phase. They are out of phase and coherent. So the answer is B. This is an easy stuff from the O level. Uh, this is as well also. It's easy. Yeah. Yes, we did that in the previous time. We did that also. Okay, we stopped at question uh, 23. You can use the following equations to determine the intensity. This equation can be applied to all waves, including sound. The intensity of sound at certain distance from loudspeaker. The amplitude of the sound at this calculate the power transmitted through a cross-sectional area of 8 times 10 to the power negative 5 when the intensity of the sound is about 3.5. Okay, we need a power A we, we, from the definition of intensity power over area. If I want to find the power, I have to multiply the intensity times what the area. The intensity is um, 3.5 times 10 to the power negative 3. This is the intensity. And the area is 8 times 10 to the power minus 5. OK, in this way we can find the power B. We are asked about the intensity of the sound where the amplitude. OK, so the intensity is directly proportional to the amplitude squared. If you remember. OK, direct proportional to the anti-ash amplitude squared. So um, uh, to remind you, just to remind you, I2 is the new intensity. I1, uh, the original intensity, A2, the new amplitude, A1, uh, the original amplitude. Here, this is uh, A2, this is A1, right? This is I1, okay? We're asked about the intensity when the amplitude, I2 over 3.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 equals A2, which is 0 0.9 over 0 0.45 squared. Then by doing the calculation, you can find the answer. C, the amplitude of the sound where the intensity 5.6, the same equation I will use, or the same ratio. Yeah. 
this one. Substitute I2, this is I2 now. Okay, this is I2. So 5.6 times 10 to the power minus 2 over 3.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 equals A2, which we are asked to find, over A1, which is 0 0.45 squared. So in here we have to take the square root for both sides, then multiply the answer by Um, this guys, this question is about the relation between the intensity with amplitude. Here, uh, it's a question about a relation between intensity and uh, what distance, intensity and distance. The intensity of wave may be identified by power transmitted per unit area, cross-sectional area at right angle to the direction of travel. For a point source of light, explain why the intensity I at distance R away from the source obey inverse squared law. A. This is a point source. Uh, the point source guys emits rays in all directions. Like this. Now, if I want to consider a surface that is perpendicular this rays, this surface will be sphere. This surface will be sphere. Okay. Uh, intensity equals power over the area. Here, it's virtual sphere. You need, I can take it as a virtual, something virtual, a sphere. So a surface area of uh, sphere is 4 pi r squared, where r, this is r, guys. Radius or the distance. A radius, which is the same as the distance. So it's power over... 4 pi r squared. This means that i is proportional to 1 over r squared and inversely proportional with a distance squared. Okay. Part B. The intensity of visible light from the sun reaching upper part of the atmosphere is about let's say this is I1, right? This is intensity of the sun at where? At the atmosphere. The sun radius, okay, and we may consider this as D1, with distance from the sun to the earth, this is D2. The intensity of visible light that emitted, calculate the intensity of visible light has. B, the intensity is inversely proportional the intensity is inversely proportional to the distance so we are asked to find the intensity 
were at the sun surface, يعني at D1. Sorry, let me. Uh, this is D2. I know, no, no problem, just labeling things. D1. Why I consider this? Because the intensity here at the surface is I1. Intensity at the surface is I1. Uh, surface of the earth, so I have to consider D1 is the distance of the earth. They should be uh, uh, cross, they should be corresponding to each other. Again, guys, the intensity I1 okay. Uh, the intensity I1 is proportional, uh, or I1 corresponds to the distance D1, which is at the atmosphere. This is the distance for the Earth. This is the intensity reaching the Earth. I wrote this equation in this way, since they are inversely proportional with the square um, of the distance. Uh, we are asked about I2, the intensity at the Earth, uh, sorry, at the sun surface over I1, which is 1.5, 1.4, equals uh, D1, 1.5, times 10 to the power 11, over D2, which is the radius, because we are asked to find the intensity at the surface of the sun, 7, 8, I think, yes, squared. Then you can find I2. See, uh, the total power radiated by the sun in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now we found the, uh, we need the power. Power equals intensity. Times the area. Okay, the intensity that uh, found here. Okay, here uh, the area should be uh, the surface area of the sun can be found as 4 pi r squared. 4 pi instead of r, I have to multiply it by 7 times 10 to the power 8 squared. Okay, I can find the surface area of the sun. Then substitute these things here. I got D, we are asked about the intensity of light from the sun at the planet Neptune, where the distance is 4.5. So, and here, guys, I can use the same thing, same equation here, I2 over I1 equals D1 over H D2 squared. Uh, the intensity... I have here um, two intensities here. Intensity for the, uh, the sun surface, intensity at the Earth's surface. When we are asked about intensity of the neptune, uh, at the neptune surface. I can use any of these things. I can use the intensity of the sun over the intensity of ash neptune, right? equals distance of Neptune over distance of the surface of the sun squared. So and the intensity of the sun, we have to find it, by the way. Let me find it. 
we have to substitute this intensity that is sun which I don't know what this is it Uh, 4.5 divided by 4.5 times 10 to the power 12. And the distance, uh, sorry, we are asked about this. Uh, distance for Neptune is 4.5, I think, so times 10 to the power 12. It's great. Okay, so and this is uh, the intensity here, I2, which is for the sun here, for the sun. When we found it, we can substitute here. Okay. Uh, a source of sound has a frequency f, sound wavelength lambda is produced by the source. State what is meant by frequency. Guys, this is an, an important question. Uh, frequency, um, it's the number of waves. That. Has a fixed point. Per unit. Time. Okay. Uh, the distance moved uh, in terms of lambda by the wave front during n oscillation. n oscillation means n waves, right, of the source. If I consider this is the source, let's say, roughly speaking, we have um, We have six waves. The source. One oscillation, two oscillation, three oscillations, four oscillations, and so on. Four oscillation. Here, guys. This is the distance traveled. Right, so here the distance traveled is equivalent to four lambda. Why? Because from here to here lambda, from here to here another lambda, from here to here another lambda, from here to here another lambda. So here the distance traveled is equivalent uh, to number of way uh, 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 equivalent to uh, the number of wavelengths, or sorry, um, the total wavelengths between these two points. So basically, if I want to consider the distance here, the distance here, it will be n times lambda, right? The distance will be n times lambda. This is an important question. Use your answer in one to deduce an expression for the speed v of the wave in the terms, in terms of f and uh, lambda. Okay, guys. Here, speed equals what? Distance over time, pay attention. Distance as what we mentioned here, n times lambda over time. Guys, um, if I consider, oh, like this, I mean, arrange it like this, times lambda. What is n over t? Number of waves or number of oscillations per unit time. Number of waves or oscillations per unit time. This is what? This is frequency. Right? 
So speed equals what now? Frequency times lambda. This is the expression for what? For the speed. Here, the waveform um, of the sound produced on the screen cathode ray oscilloscope, the time base is two. Determine the frequency of the sound. Hello, if you remember, guys, to determine the frequency, I have to use this. First of all, I have to find the period, which is peak to peak distance times time base. Period equals peak to peak distance. This is peak to peak distance, guys. Or this is very clear, or I may take the, the in hand. Now, uh, to find this, uh, this is one, this is two, three. So, uh, peak to peak distance here, guys, is three times time base two times uh, 10 to the power negative three because it's milliseconds which is equals 10 times 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. So then I can find the frequency by taking the reciprocal of the result. This is an important question, guys. A second sound wave has the same frequency that as calculated in one. The amplitude of the two waves is the same, but the phase difference between them is 90. Okay, guys, draw the waveform of the second wave. Here, guys, in order to draw the wave, if you remember, here I have to find the shift in time. Because here, guys, we are um, in cathode ray oscilloscope, it gives us displacement versus time. Also, scope we are given displacement versus ash time. So, I will use this equation in our phase difference equals t over period times 360. Uh, here, guys, we will, we will not consider, and this is a period, guys. This is what a period, and this represents a period if you remember in distance. In displacement time graph, this is what? This is a period. Here we are not finding the actual period. Here, guys, we will not consider the actual period. We will consider as, uh, the graphical period. And he, this is the actual period. This is what? The actual period. We will not consider this. We will consider this. The graphical one. OK, the graphical ash one, because I want to uh, draw another wave. So here 90 equals T that we are asked to find, oh, that we have to find, sorry. The period here, guys, I, as what I told you before, I will take the graphical one, which is this one, which is a three here. OK, graphical one is a three, not the actual one, times ash 360. Um, Cross multiplication or divide, you will find that T equals what? Uh, 90 quarter times 3.75. And guys, the shift is 0.75. And here, e every point is shifted by 0.75. Let's do here. Let's do it here. Pay attention, guys, because here the scale is is bad. Guys, the peak here. Now we will consider, if you remember, peaks, crests, troughs, zeros. 
This is trough. Zero. Let me erase this. Okay. Press here. Zero here. Drop and so on. Here, guys, every point will be shifted by point seventy five. If you consider here, this is the midpoint. Right? Am I right? Yes. Uh, high, yani, approximately 0.75, by the way. But keep this. Hi, it's very clear. Guys, this position here in the quarter, in the quarter, in the first quarter of the, uh, this is square. Chefin square, Chefin had square. This is the square. This is the square. Had a J in the in the quarter. If you add 0.75, because as we've mentioned before, every point will be shifted 0.75. The point here will be here. Here will be shifted 0.75, so it will be here. This one in the uh, third quarter. The one high one quarter. Fa. To this position one quarter. We will have half. We will have position one half. The midpoint. We have to shift every point 0.75. Here in the midpoint, we will have the first quarter here. I end the first quarter to join 1.75 and I 0.75 and each point will be shifted 0.75. This one as well. Okay, I can now connect these points. And so this is what the shift and I will come in and work. So we have to. Down here, guys, um, loudspeaker produce sound wave at constant frequency. Outline uh, how a cathode ray oscilloscope may be used to determine this frequency. And we have to draw an oscilloscope. We have to write, you know, we have to find the period, peak to peak distance, so then multiply by time base, eventually the frequency who went over a period. Uh, here we have, we are given two waves like this. This is displacement time. This is displacement distance right here. This is a displacement time. This is a displacement what? Distance. Define for a wave what is meant by displacement wavelength. Okay. Displacement or the distance. Uh, between the equilibrium position and uh, the position of the particle. Well, wavelength, it's the distance between two equivalent or two successive ish equivalent points or that they are in phase. Here, the same thing, we are asked to find the period. The period, guys, we can find it from here. From displacement time graph. I take full cycle or peak to peak distance if you would like. Because here it's very clear. This is a complete one complete cycle. Here. So it's 0 0.6 seconds. Wavelength as well. I can find it from here. 
take one complete cycle. So now this is a complete cycle. is four. We are asked about the speed. Frequency times lambda or one or one times lambda. Times four. State and explain uh, whether the, the wave is losing power as it moves away from the source. Basically, guys, here uh, power equals what intensity times area since the intensity is directly proportional. the amplitude squared the amplitude decreases so and uh, intensity decreases Therefore, power decreases. Okay. Here it's very clear. So now on. Here the amplitude decreases. Okay. Amplitude what? Decreases. So as the amplitude decreases, the intensity decreases, will power as well what decreases. Okay. What we are asked later, we are asked to find the intensity of the wave and the source. At an intensity of the wave six centimeter from the source. Come on. The intensity, guys, is proportional um, to the amplitude squared. So this will be um, amplitude at the source. Or this will be equivalent to. Here is, here is amplitude to the uh, amplitude at six centimeters squared. You can use this. This is at the source. is two centimeters. Will intensity at six centimeters away from the source. One point one. Yes, one point one. So here just substitute what uh, two point two point zero over one point one squared. Here uh, transverse progress. Uh, I will keep. 
We did the question similar to this one. Yes, let's do this one. And these are the basic questions about basic variables of the waves. Here, distinguish uh, between uh, transverse and longitudinal CZ. Polarized, guys, it's cancelled from the syllabus. Here, we are given a displacement versus distance graph. We are asked about amplitude, it's easy. This is the amplitude. Two point two, two point four, two point eight, uh, two point six, two point eight. So it's two point eight centimeters. We are asked about the phase difference between points A and B. Guys, pay attention to this. Phase difference, guys. In order to find the phase difference, x over lambda times three sixty. Why did they use this? Because we are given displacement versus distance graph. Displacement versus what distance graph uh, this is the shift guys this is what the shift Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So it's one. Here one, here point four. So the shift here is four minus one over wavelength. This is the wavelength. Uh -huh. One complete cycle. Notice this guys. One. One complete cycle, one complete cycle. So it's um, 0.8 times 360 degree. This would be 135 degree. This is the phase difference. So I, I found the shift in, uh, in distance between A and B. Here we are asked about the amplitude of the wave with the twice intensity of the shown in figure. OK, so here this means. I think you get use that. And no, I2 equals 2 I1. I2 equals what? 2 I1, the new intensity. I2 over I1 equals a2 over a1 direct proportion to the amplitude squared we are asked about the amplitude the new one and then state of i2 to i1 over i1 equals a2 that we are asked to find a1 we found it before which is 2.4 2.8 squared if you do this calculation you will get um, 3.9 Here, um, we are given a question like this. We are asked about the phase difference between this point and what uh, this point divided. Um, starting from, you can start from zero, by the way, if you would like. This is zero. After a quarter cycle, it will be 90 degree. After another quarter cycle, 180 degree. Then, after another third quarter, 270 degree. So uh, the answer is 270. Guys, and I have a pattern diamond wave. 
position zero crest zero trough zero crest zero trough zero crest zero trough and so on صح هلا من zero لل crest عنا دائما quarter cycle من crest ل zero برضو quarter cycle من zero ل trough again quarter cycle فأنا if I know this right if I know this pattern I can easily draw the wave or determine حتى even the الفيز هلا هون ايش وات اي ديد يا عويدي طلع معي هذا زيرو صح هذا كريست فال ديفرنس بين ذيم كوارتر هذا تراف سوري تراف وزيرو ديفرنس كوارتر بين زيرو وكريست ديفرنس كوارتر فاحنا عندنا 3 كوارترز هير كلير اوكي Similar thing here. Start from here, or this is zero, right? This is pi over two. This is what uh, pi. This is three pi over two. Two pi. Two point five pi. Come on. Five over two pi, if you would like. Here was three pi. Here three point five pi. Okay, because each quarter here, guys, I divided the wave to quarters. Okay, each quarter represented is represented by pi over four. If you took the difference between this 3.5 pi minus 0.5 pi, I will get what? 3 pi. Okay. Uh, I can also do it in another way since they are antiphase. They are. It's very clear that they are antiphase. To be antiphase, uh, n should be odd, integer and odd, odd integer. To be antiphase, right? So, which of these odd and integer? C. Define wavelength frequency. We did this question before. We did one similar to it. Here, here amplitude, speed, phase difference. Uh, here, uh, the wave in B was produced in the ripple tank. Describe briefly with the eye of the sketch diagram how the wave may be. Observed, I have to either um, using this or I have to mention this, and I will use yellow, uh, shallow tank of water. The light should be placed above, like this light screen, correct position above and below the ripple tank. The light is above the ripple tank, the screen below the ripple tank. We will use a stroboscope or camera in order to. Uh, freeze the waves. Last question. Okay. Here. We are given that we are given two waves, wave A, wave B. We are given displacement versus time for both waves. By reference to figure 5.1, state one similarity and one difference between these two waves. Uh, one similarity, I think they have the same period. <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, yeah, they have the same period. I period, which is three, my period, which is three. They have the same period. Okay. But they are antiphase, guys. So now on peak and other position, we have crest, a trough, sorry, at this position, at the same position, we have a uh, crest. So antiphase. This is the, oh, they have different phase. Different phase. Similarity. Same period. They have different phase type. 
state with the reason whether the two waves are coherent. Yes, they are coherent. Why? I may use rule test if you'd like. Here, crest with a trough. Here, crest. And in position of crest with position of trough, the same or the same. Here, similar. Uh, crest with a trough, here similar, crest with a trough, yes, they are coherent. Uh, state with the reason whether the two waves are coherent, yes, uh, they have the same. Phase. Shift. And same frequency. Okay, since they have the same period, so they have the same uh, frequency. The intensity of wave A alone at point P is I. Show that the intensity of wave B alone at point P is 4 over 9 I. And the intensity, guys, this is A, right? This is B1. Uh, just be sorry, this is C. C1, show that the intensity of wave B, okay. Uh, guys, intensity I2 over I1 equals A2 over A1 squared. We are given that in the intensity at P, and then all, uh, so let me. This is A, B. Then amplitude of A over amplitude of B. Intensity of A is I, I have. Intensity of B, we are asked to find it. Equals that we have to find the amplitude. Here, the amplitude of A is a 3. The amplitude of B I one I two two right here three over two squared. This becomes I over I B nine over four. If you do cross multiplication I B yeah, I'll bring in 4 over 9i, which we are asked to find here. 4 over 9i. I'll calculate the resultant intensity in terms of i of the two waves at point uh, P. That I have to add them, these two intensities. But one is positive, the other is negative. Why negative? Because they are antiphase, and here they are, they will meet a crest with what with the trough. We will explain that later on. No problem. We we'll determine the resultant displacement for the two waves at point uh, three milliseconds. And the resultant displacement three milliseconds zero. The displacement here is zero and the three milliseconds. The displacement on and three milliseconds is zero. Zero. Then the resultant displacement equals uh, displacement A plus displacement B, zero, zero, so zero. Two, with the result and displacement and the four milliseconds, I four.
Okay. Right displacement and four horn. Horn and four. Right displacement. No, no, it's going. I have to go to 0.6 negative. Negative 2.6 centimeter. I have to go on. I have to go on. 1.6. Okay, positive. And then we are asked for displacement, so I have to consider uh, direction uh, high negative 2.6 plus 1.6 so it's ash negative one centimeter uh, state one property of electromagnetic wave that is not common to other transverse waves in uh, um, electromagnetic waves uh, oh no they they, they, they They do not need a medium so, to travel through it. Here, guys, you have to know the arrangement of the waves, the order. You have to know uh, from the table uh order of magnitude for each wavelength is given you have to memorize stuff polarized guys is cancelled i want to show you this question yeah this one okay, the number of wavelengths of a visible light in one meter is in the order of the number of wavelengths if you remember distance equals ash n times lambda right in one meter any distance d and we are asked about number of wavelengths n times the wavelength the visible light the average the visible light the average the visible light the visible light between 400 nanometer you have to memorize these things to 700 what nanometers the average of that 400 plus 700 over 2 nanometers, I think the 550 nanometers. So I have to multiply here 550 times 10 to the power minus 9. So n equals 1 over 550 times 10 to the power minus 9. It's about um, 2 times 10 to the power 6. So the order of magnitude on the ash 10 to the power 6. Okay, I will take ash the order of magnitude. I will do my best and I start recording also uh, screen recording. Uh, okay, guys, I think. We stopped at this point, right? Okay, we explained this part. Okay, guys, uh, we stopped at this point. Um, Uh, here, guys, um, this is a question about uh, the sound wave. We are given a sound wave. Uh, calculate uh, the period of the wave, then calculate what? The frequency. Okay, guys. Um, here in this 
we are given a wave, but look to this wave guy. It's a displacement versus distance. So in displacement dis versus distance, guys, we cannot find the period. We cannot find the period directly. I I can find only here the wavelength. I can find the wavelength. How can I find the wavelength? I have to take one complete cycle. This is one complete cycle, which is 0 0.6, which is ash 0.6. Clear? So the wavelength here is 0 0.6. I can find the frequency knowing the speed of sound in air, which is 330. So I found the frequency using this formula, uh, velocity over lambda, which, which is 330 over 0.6. Then I can find what? The period. Then I can find the period. It's an easy stuff. It's not a, a big problem. Now, actually, I have to focus on part B. Please, guys, pay attention. Pay attention to part B. On a copy of diagram, draw a wave of the same frequency, but four times the intensity. Same frequency, but four times what? The intensity. Guys, to draw any wave, I need the wavelength. Or I need its amplitude. Here, to draw any wave, uh, you need either wavelength. صح? I need to determine the wavelength. Or I need to determine what? The amplitude. Uh, we are given that the same frequency, so same wavelength. So I have to find what? The amplitude. Here it's given that the intensity is four times the, uh, or becomes four times. I will use this equation, guys. And I2 over I1 equals A2 over what? A1 squared. A2 over A1 what? Squared. We are given that the new intensity, I2, equals 4I1, which is given here. Ustad, you are going to write it because it is not clear to me that you are going to write it. طيب is it clear that I'm erasing stuff? اه هلا انمسح اه اوكي جايز هلا احنا I will substitute here I2 is 4I1 over I1 right equals A2 we are asked oh, we have to find it in order to draw the second wave over A1 which is I have to find it from the graph guys I have to find A1 from the graph the uh, amplitude Here, one, one, two, three, four, five. So the amplitude here is 0.5 because here is point what uh, is one, right? It's one. So here, I have to substitute here as 0.5 squared. So uh, I1 cancels I1. I have to take square root for both sides in order to find A2. So 2 equals A2 over 0.5. So A2 equals what? 1 centimeter. So guys, the amplitude now is 1 centimeter. Same frequency, does not change. Look how, how will I draw this. Guys. Here, in the position of the crest, I have to make the amplitude what? 1. Here, nothing is changed. In the position of trough, I, I will make it negative 1, 0, um, 1, and so on. But I changed what? I changed the amplitude. Any question, guys, about this? speaker produce sound wave of constant frequency outline how cathode oscilloscope can be used to determine the frequency we did the questions like this guys so I'm not outlining but we know that so and we have to find oh some some cathode oscilloscope like this ice cream 
هون بنحط الواي انبوت بنسميهم هيك واي انبوت هون بيكون في عنا ايش كنترول اللي هو التايم بيس بس طبعا الواي انبوت هون بنوصل معاه المايك اذا بدنا نحط هون مثلا مايك او وات ايفر واجين جايز ميجر بيك تو بيك ديفرنس بيك تو بيك ديستنس صح الهاي اللي هي بيك تو بيك ديستنس ملتيبلايت باي تايم بيس So this is how we will outline this. And then uh, frequency uh, equals one over period. That's it. The Doppler effect. The Doppler effect. In Sheldon's words, it's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. The Doppler effect is perhaps best explained visually. So here's a thing that is emitting waves. It could be a fire truck emitting sound, it could be a star emitting light, it could be a dock creating ripples on a pond. Those are all waves, and they all look something like this. We see the Doppler effect happening when the thing that is emitting waves moves. In the direction it's moving, the waves are observed at a high frequency, and if the they spread out. If our Okay, guys. Look here, guys. Uh, if the observer... Uh, stands uh, in the left side uh, of the source, right? Left side of the source. Uh, just a second, yes. Okay. <coughs> Okay, guys. Here, if you look here, here, if the source is moving in this direction, I will observe that the a, a wavelength or the waves are squeezed, right? Is it clear? If the source is moving, the waves uh, are squeezed. So the wavelength decreases here. If the wavelength decreases, if someone stands here, let's say this is a source of sound, right? Let's say this is what a source of sound if someone stands here as as the uh, waves are squeezed in, in this direction so the frequency increases because you if you remember if the wavelength decreases frequency is uh, or frequency increases so any observer here will hear the sound uh, as it has higher pitch okay or higher frequency higher what frequency Okay, now let's go to the video again. The wave fronts bunch up and behind it they spread out. If our object is moving towards a stationary observer, these bunched up waves are observed at a high frequency. And if the object is moving away from a stationary observer, the waves are observed at a lower frequency. So that is the Doppler effect, the apparent change. So that observer, the waves are observed at a lower frequency. So that is the Doppler effect, the apparent change. Here guys, if the source is moving away from the observer, like this one, okay, here, this, here <coughs> the observer, The wavelength seems that the wavelength here increases, right? So if the wavelength here increases, frequency what decreases. So the observer here, guys, will observe lower pitch of sound, yani, or uh, a lower frequency. Guys, did you observe that? Again, notice, guys, please. I'm not talking about the loudness of the sound. Definitely, the loudness of the sound uh, will change as the sound, as the sound, 
okay uh, definitely the loud uh, the sound uh, the loudness of the sound uh, will be higher when it, when the source is is moving towards us and will be lower when the source is moving away from us guys notice the pitch of the sound okay notice the pitch of the sound Now it's it's coming towards us. What will happen to the pitch of the sound? Okay, guys. Uh, did you notice the difference between the pitch of the sound while the sound source is moving towards us or the sound uh, is moving away from us? When it's moving towards us, uh, we will feel that the sound becomes uh, uh, or uh, becomes a, a higher pitch. While it's, while it's moving away, the sound becomes a, sh a lower pitch. Tamam? How can I calculate this observed frequency? Right? And uh, uh, um, uh, because of this, Okay, because of this, there's a change in the frequency, right? There's a change in the frequency as what we uh, observed. Now, how can we represent that mathematically or what is the Doppler effect? Doppler effect, um, it's the change of the, in the observed frequency of the wave uh, for a stationary observer. which occur if the source of sound is moving either towards or away from the observer. How can we measure this uh, frequency or calculate this frequency? I have to calculate it using F O equals F S times V uh, over V plus minus V S. Come on, F O, it's the observed frequency which is the, the frequency, uh, our appearance frequency that will be changed. Just a moment, please. Okay, guys. So uh, frequency at which are at which they are received to the observer. Vs, it's the velocity relative to the source or the velocity of the moving source. V relative, our velocity relative to this medium, and yani velocity of waves in this medium, and yani velocity of sound in air, for example. Or Fs, it's the frequency of the source, the actual frequency. Hello, here, guys. Well, so the intermediate of plus or minus. Intermediate of uh, internal. Plus or into minus. Yes, exactly. I will, I will explain that for you. Here, guys, we have plus and minus. Listen, if the source is moving away, if the source is moving away, we have to use a negative. If the source is moving towards, We have to use what? A positive value. Uh, moving. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. I high plus, high minus. Sorry. Okay. Okay, guys. Hello. Uh, complete the table. If the source is moving towards the observer, the frequency increases. Wavelength what? Decreases. The explanation that uh, the waves are squeezed towards the observer so the wavelength decreases accordingly the frequency what increases the frequency what increases okay guys any question about that? Here, away, the frequency decreases because the wavelength edge increases. Here, the waves... 
right? The waves are, uh, or on the waves. become further apart or further apart so wavelength increases will you frequency what decreases this is as what we see where in the video right if the observer is here the frequency increases if the observer is here the frequency what decreases let's uh, do this exercise a cop car driver at, thir uh, at 30 meters per second towards a scene of crime with its uh, stream blurring at frequency 2000 this is guys the frequency of the source 2000 hertz the original frequency at what frequency do the people hear the sound as as it approaches approaches which means what moving towards okay so i will use this equals i have my formula don't forget it I, f o f s v over v plus minus v s Here I will use a negative because it's moving what? Towards. So the original frequency or the source 2000. This is guys the source of this, uh, the speed of the source. This is Vs, right? This is the velocity of what? Of the source. The velocity of sound in air 343 over 343 minus 20. Okay. This is the uh, frequency as it approaches. If it's moving apart or moving away, the same thing I will do. 2000 times 343 or 343. Now 343 plus 20. Who has calculator, guys? Rand? Stars. 20. 20. 20 or 30? Ah, sorry, 30. Us back 30, yes, so. yes. Rand, are you with us? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Seven. I which one? One nine seven. Yes, one nine seven It should be less than the frequency, the actual frequency. You had it should be more than. I think it will be twenty um, uh, two thousand twenty something like this. Sir, the leash. Ma taqat in is a. Arab al is a al sayar. مثلاً is Arab at a shakhs a shakhs. This is a higher frequency. Here we will get higher. Here we will get 20 something. I don't know. Had a way. This is a way. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. Had a way and had a two words. Okay, guys. The word 2,191. No, I'm not sure. Okay, fine. Type guys, this. والله كل الشباب مصحصحين معك اليوم. السلام. Dash FS. Right. It's eight hundred eighty. Right. The original frequency or the frequency for the source is eight hundred eighty. Rama, are you with us, Rama? Tabi, Allah, how many people, Rama? Eight hundred eighty times four forty-four over. Yes, excellent. Times not forty-four times three hundred four forty. 
لا مش ال V 44 لا هاي مش V S هاي V اللي هي ال speed of sound in air right over اه كملي راما over 340 minus 44 اوكي طيب Receives, you know that it means that it's you know it's moving away, right? It's or the source is moving away. Noor, Noor, Maana. Just a moment. Yalla, Noor, the second one. Uh, eight forty eight eighty yeah. um, times three forty yeah. over three forty plus forty four. Plus forty. Here we will we should have uh, we should get a lower frequency than eight hundred eighty. Here greater frequency than eight hundred eighty. Here we have to get a frequency less than eight hundred.